Um, my name is Kerry Clark and I'm currently a primary school teacher. So at the time I was working for a charity um, and I was receiving some coaching from a lovely lady called Lynn Sedgemore. And Lynn suggested that this course was available. So I started to look. And at the time I thought, mm, sounds good, but not quite for me at this time. So we did some coaching for about three to four months. And after that coaching, um, I just felt I wanted to ask the question again about the course. So I spoke to Lynn and she said, yep, I think you're ready now. Well, <laughs> I'm no longer at the charity. Um, so when I started the course, um, I was at a time when I felt that I was being an unkind leader. So I was starting to do things that didn't feel congruent. Um, it was quite a tricky situation. Um, a, a team that needed to be brought together and things that needed to move forwards. And I felt very alone. So I was making decisions, but I didn't quite feel in myself that I was making them from a good place. So the reason I initially contacted him with the, the coaching was I just Googled kind leadership um, and she popped up. But particularly with the course, um, the shift came about because I felt that actually where I was putting my energy wasn't the right place anymore. So I had um, previously had some career coaching and had thought that returning to teaching was high on the list. But it never kind of manifested, it just, it felt quite stuck. So after the coaching with Lynn and being on the first residential, I just knew I had to shift. Um, and so I started to apply and really quickly things moved. <laughs> so that was a really big shift. Um, and I think through each of the residentials as well, I've built a confidence in the way that I'm teaching um, has evolved um, and teaching from a place that feels led from here rather than being led from the curriculum or the outside kind of world and being able to test that out and come back um, and sort of share that with the group and the facilitators and then go back and do some more practice has been really helpful. So I see that as an ongoing journey mm -hmm. um, and I'm in my first year after 12 years of being out in the classroom so <laughs> Um, it's had its bumps as well, which having the course has been really stabilising. Uh, the second thing that's really happened that I hadn't expected was allowing more love into my life. And that's come about from personal situations where uh, my partner has proposed to me and I've accepted. <laughs> so uh, that's a significant change and also the potential of talking about having a family as well. So that's like a big open door that's happened. Um, and I think the third part that I've really felt on the course is connecting into a spiritual community. Um, I've kind of bumbled my way through of different things that have felt um, nice to experience and nourishing for myself. But I've always felt like I was sort of bumbling around on my own and happening to come coming across things and then sort of feeling okay for a while and then moving to somewhere else. Um, and what I felt with the course is an acceptance of actually that's okay and it doesn't need to be a particular way. And being amongst new friends who um, I've felt like the sort of spiritual baby of the group because I'm amongst people that have practiced <laughs> and they've been there and done it. And having people that I can just go, I feel like this and that's been okay. I think having come out of um, academic studies, so finishing a PhD and being very knowledgeable um, about that particular niche of, of experience, it's just shown me how much more there is and actually the things that are important. So I think the course, because the way that the course is run is very um, open, and there is no expectation, so there is no performance involved. It is very freeing in the way that it's facilitated. So the, um, I remember the first residential, um, the, the leaders, Margaret and Margie, just said, you can just do what you like in the afternoon. You know, if you'd like to share your reflections, then that'll be fine. And if you want to go for a walk, that'll be okay. And I was like, 
what, really? <laughs> um, so I went to bed and I slept and it was exactly what I needed. I was exhausted. And it gave me the space um, to grow into more depth of, of actually where do I want to go with this journey. So although we've been facilitated, I feel we've just been held in the space to go where we needed to go. And as soon as we walk in the door, I can feel at peace when I'm driving here um, and really looking forward to seeing everybody again. But as soon as you come in the door and you see welcome friends on the doormats, you just go, oh, and I don't know, just something drops into a deeper level. Um, and the kindness that people just ooze when they're here, um, and that's from the people that I have prepared the food to the gentleman that's come and put his camera here for us, <laughs> and Martin come in and, you know, and everybody wanting um, it to work. It just feels a very positive environment and also very gentle um, and spacious. So for me, coming away from um, home, um, away from the school environment and it being a very dedicated space to come to, it almost feels like landing on another planet <laughs> um, and just going, oh, I can just be here now. Um, and I think the grounds, it's a joy to practice. I occasionally do yoga in the grounds and it is beautiful. Um, it's lovely to see over the residentials, the grounds change. Um, and the garden is where, you know, the flowers are absolutely stunning. So it's just a place of natural beauty. For me, and I can only really share from my own experience, if anybody feels that there's a bit of incongruence, there's a bit that feels there's just something not quite right um, and wants to come and explore that. Um, I didn't know what the course would unravel. I didn't know where the changes were going to come and I didn't actually expect any changes. But I think somebody that just feels there's something not quite lining up um, and I certainly knew that. So I think for me, in answering that question, it would be anybody that's starting to look for something different or for some help. Um, this is certainly a place where you'll get the help and it won't be done for you um, but you'll be guided and supported in finding out what it is that you need. Well at, at the time it enabled me to, well there didn't need to be conversations at home but it enabled me to feel that I could <laughs> um, without sacrificing something else but actually as the journey continued and I returned to teaching with a salary reduction, it actually it was pretty critical because going back into a role that felt more congruent and on the ground, um, it enabled me to, to do the stuff now rather than waiting for the money to become available. Um, and it's, it's something that I've always believed that when the time is right, it just happens anyway. But I think it's it's something that I will look to put back into um, when the abundance is there, because I know the value it's given me. The one exercise that we've done that I think for me represents the answer to that question is when we walk the labyrinth at the beginning of this residential. Um, and there's been some geese that have um, deposited some poos <laughs> on the lawn. Um, and I think that that symbolises for me how the world um, is at the moment that there is a lot of stuff being left around um, and maybe mindlessly you know people not even knowing that that is happening and as we walk the labyrinth um, I felt a sense of continuing to walk the journey um, and walking in truth no matter what was actually on the ground um, and to do that confidently and what was amazing through that is almost sort of, you know, taking the step over, but then looking around and everybody else also walking that path and certainly not feeling alone. Um, and meeting in the centre, giving each other room to manoeuvre as we bypass each other as well. So without conflict, still being in our own truth. And I think with the world right now, there are so many different ways to reach that centre is the opportunity to do that cohesively um, and without even conflict of this is the right path or this is the wrong path 
is just being able to continue to take our own steps and trust step by step that we are going the right way. And it was very tempting to want to pick some of the poo up and move it out of the way. But actually that would have wasted the energy. So just keep stepping. Yeah, I was encouraged to ask about the bursary um, that Woodbrook provides. And at the time I was in a senior leader role in a charity. So at that time it enabled me to make a conscious decision to put my own funds into it and be supported. So I did receive a Woodbrook bursary, which was amazing. Um, and I paid half the cost myself. Um, my, the employer at the time said, don't know what that course is. <laughs> um, it's not the same as a doctorate or it's not the same as um, an academic qualification. So it's not something we can fund. They were generous and they gave me the time. Um, but in terms of the personal financial commitments, um, it just enabled the family commitments and my personal development to come together. So it was an easy decision to put my own contribution in and it just enabled me to come with the bursary as well. Yeah. The main bit I had written down um, was just to trust that if you're watching this, you're probably interested. <laughs> So um, I certainly know myself that if I'm watching a video about a course, then I'm, I'm tentative. I'm kind of checking it out. And I would just say, sit for a minute, check whether it's the right thing for you, and then jump in. Thank you very much. <laughs>